and welcome to my channel. My name is Londa Carter and I am The Recovering Hunbot. If you enjoy anti-MLM content, then you might want to consider subscribing. Today's video is Lizzie's story about vector marketing. She had a positive experience and wanted to share it. I'm really glad that she did not have a crappy experience because that's typically the case. So what I'm also going to do is share a couple of stories from r slash anti-MLM about vector marketing and also what Ethan Vanderbilt has to say about vector marketing. One way you can support me is, you know, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment because that engagement thing really does help videos get seen more. If you are interested in supporting anti-MLM content, I have a Patreon and you are welcome to join that. I've made it really super simple. There are three tiers, very affordable, ranging from $1 to $10 a month. There'll be a link to that in the description. And now let's get to Lizzie's story. Okay, I have Lizzie's story right in front of me, so I'm going to be reading that to you to make sure I don't forget any of the crucial details. Lizzie is a single college student and studies criminal justice. At 19, she joined Vector Marketing, which sells Cutco knives. She knew about this company because her brother had sold for them when he was younger. She sold for Vector Marketing for a summer and says that there was really never any pressure to stay with them, like during the school year or anything. She made around $600 each month with Vector Marketing, and according to Lizzie, she did not have any expenses. Now, this is a side note, and this is, you know, me going, how do you not have expenses? Because if you're demonstrating knives, you need to be able to demonstrate them on something like, you know, cut some food. So I would think that you're going to have to bring cheese, bring food, bring something that you're going to be demonstrating the products on because I doubt that you can just ask people to go and get the products or to whip something out from the refrigerator so that you can cut into it. I would think that there would be an expense plus, you know, little plates or something because again, you're not going to think the person that you're going to their home is supplying that stuff. At least that's my thought. Maybe they are expected to do it. I don't know. Another expense that comes to mind is gas. Unless everybody lives right across the street from you, you're going to have to drive somewhere. And gas does cost money. Now perhaps Lizzie wasn't paying for any of these things. Perhaps she was living with her parents and just grabbed stuff that her parents had. And maybe they were paying for her gas, so she didn't think of any of these things as being an expense. However, it is an expense and somebody is paying for whatever it is you are doing the demonstration on because if I'm going to buy some knives and someone's demonstrating them, they're going to have to cut into something. According to Lizzie, she had three days of training before she started, but she did not disclose whether or not she was paid for those three days of training. Also, she had to attend two weekly meetings each week throughout the summer. She didn't specify how long these meetings were, nor did she specify if she was paid for the meetings. I'm kind of guessing she wasn't paid for them, but that's also time that you would, you know, like if you're looking at your expenses, you got to take out the amount of time that you are in these meetings and consider that as part of it as well. And I don't think she did when she wrote this because I don't think she was thinking of any of these other things as expenses and was just looking at the money coming in. Lizzie spent about four hours per week booking her demonstrations and she averaged five to 10 demos each week. So she says she worked around nine to 14 hours for vector marketing each week. According to Lizzie, you're not allowed to use social media to promote vector marketing. So she just contacted people she knew and also made connections through the people that they knew. She found out about this opportunity through a friend from high school. And while she and her friend worked for Vector Marketing, they also both had other jobs. Lizzie says a lot of students use Vector as part-time income. Lizzie was never told that working for Vector would be a great alternative to traditional employment. She was told it would be an easy way for her to earn additional income. Lizzie did not have to pay any fees, which is unlike, you know, other MLMs. Now, admittedly, I have not looked into the underbelly of this MLM, so let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a deep dive. She admits that she was very skeptical at first, but after seeing her friend's bank statement, she felt reassured. When she joined, she was full aware that most people who join an MLM don't make any money and, in fact, lose money. 
In her situation though, she wasn't worried because she was being paid $19 for each of the demonstrations that she booked. The reason she joined, she says, was health related. She needed to take care of herself and needed the time to do that and knew there'd be times when she would not be working her job. Vector Marketing provided her a script, but she was never told that she would experience financial freedom or anything just by selling the knives. In fact, when she was um, being instructed, she was told not to push selling the knives. I find that kind of odd because if you're making a commission off of this, who's doing the selling then? I mean, was there someone else that followed up and did the selling and then she got part of the commission and that person got part of the commission? Inquiring minds want to know, since I have not looked into the ins and outs of Vector. If you know, drop that below in the comments. This is what Lizzie says about her Vector marketing experience. I really enjoyed my time with Vector. I made lots of friends who I'm still in contact with. No one really cares that I left. Vector was a really fun experience and I'm convinced it's the only MLM without any fees. I felt such little pressure to do anything from my managers and it was a great supplement to my full-time summer job. Now we're hopping on over to r slash anti MLM and the first post is Vector Marketing Scam. In summer 2018, a young and naive version of myself received a letter offering $18.75 an hour with a very vague job description. I foolishly called the number and inquired about the job. The first red flag should have been that my future boss contacted me via text message and all but told me I was hired then and there. The only thing required of me was that I show up for a quote interview where my boss just sat in front of me and cut crap up with Cutco products, then told me I would start the following. I even turned down an offer for an actual job after being roped into this crap. The job required that I show up for twice weekly meetings and receive nothing from that in return. I was paid only 5% commission for the products I sold, and the pay scheme was full of all kinds of technicalities that weaseled me out of about half of that. The company claimed they would pay us $18.75 per appointment we scheduled with potential customers, but my low-life scumbag boss only paid me my commission checks this far. I have tried to contact him several times, but he always finds a way to put it off till later. I figured that I'll try one more time this winter after I graduate college, and if he tries any of his BS again, I'm reporting his butt to the Department of Labor for wage theft. Now again, I have not done a deep dive into Vector Marketing, so I would think that it's not going to be her upline, the person that signed her up, that's going to be sending her a check. That's whether or not you, know, you get paid directly through Vector Marketing. If that's not the case, or if that is the case, let me know below in the comments. Spent yesterday afternoon tearing down every Vector Marketing poster I saw. Now, one of the things that I hear about often or have heard often from college students and also some high school students is that there will be these flyers like put up all over the place, especially on college campuses. And, you know, having been a college student myself and I put myself through college as a server, if I had seen something like this, I would have been interested in it. But thinking about like that you're going to have to, you know, basically get people you know to let you come over and demonstrate. When I think about this, I'm thinking, well, you know what, if you're a recent high school graduate, you're going to know a lot of people because you know all the people in your high school, right? And so you're going to reach out to their parents and then their parents are going to know people. But if you're someone who has been out for a while, you're probably not going to, you know, have that big huge connection most people overall don't have this big huge network and my guess and that is my guess that is why people who work for vector offer these quote part-time jobs to people because then they're getting people who are working for them again i'm not sure about that whole um structure of how you're paid or anything but it seems like that's what uplines are doing, that uplines are hiring out people. If that's right, let me know. And if I'm wrong, let me know that too in the comments. Shady Vector Marketing Recruiting Practice. I got a text from someone saying that a friend of mine 
had recommended me for a position. This person was extremely vague about the job, so I was immediately suspicious. I texted my friend and they confirmed they never worked with anyone with that name. The person gave me their name in the text. I went to the person's Facebook page and found a post they made about open positions that was equally as vague with a link to a Google form to apply. It was on that form that I found the name. Even then, I had to read through the bullet points to find it. It claimed the company, Vector Marketing, has an a rating with the Better Business Bureau, which is a lie. And by the way, so basically the company is having people go through potential recruits Facebook friends list to pick someone, then text the recruit saying that their friend recommended them. Now that does sound incredibly shady. And that's another reason to have your Facebook friends list hidden so nobody can go through it. But it does seem like the way that anyone who signs you up, that they are going to then recruit people you know, and potentially people that you go and demonstrate for, that then they're going to try to sell them and recruit them. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not. Again, I haven't done the deep dive, but this is making me curious. Next up, we're gonna check out some of what Ethan Vanderbilt has to say about vector marketing. There is also a video that Ethan Vanderbilt did about vector marketing, so I'll make sure there's a link to that in the description as well. Vector marketing targets students that are looking for work. They do not offer jobs. They are a direct sales company. In my opinion, they are running a job scam. They give you the impression you are getting a job when in fact you are selling knives to your friends and family as an independent contractor. They have a website called Work for Students Best Jobs for College Students. And here is how they describe what they offer. Opportunity news, full-time and part-time work available. Vector has full and part-time openings available immediately for college students, recent high school graduates, individuals needing extra income, and others. No experience is required and all majors may apply. Schedules are flexible. What do Vector Marketing Independent Contractors do? They market Cutco products. They are responsible for scheduling their own appointments, conducting presentations, writing up orders, generating referrals, and turning in weekly reports. Scheduling appointments is the hardest part of the position. You have to pick up the phone and call people you know or people that have been recommended to you by friends. It's not always easy to reach people, and when you do reach and talk to people, sometimes they're not available when you're hoping to see them, or in some cases, they're simply not interested in seeing you. It's a widely acknowledged fact among vector independent contractors that telephone calling is the most challenging part of the position. You are not getting paid per hour, so every hour that you spend out in the field looking for people who want to buy from you, you are getting paid zero. Here is one of the complaints made about them by a student. I was desperate for money when I found the $15 base appointment sign in the middle of my college classroom. So I decided to apply to the position. I was called 10 minutes after applying and was told to come in the next day at 3.45 p.m. I got there thinking it's going to be a telemarketing job as that is what the assistant manager on the phone has told me. To make it shorter, I got the job after sitting through a two hour long interview where we had to take notes about the company, what year it was founded, and what they do by selling Cutco knives. Selling Cutco knives was the only thing that I and the rest of the applicants were told about the initial job. I got hired and was told that I needed to attend three six to seven hours days of training. This was odd, but as stated before, I was desperate for money, so I didn't want to say anything. I knew that I was going to quit after what I needed to get was paid for. The first training day, we sat through our head manager spilling things that had nothing to do with telemarketing Cutco Knives, which I thought we were doing at the time. He talked about the basis of sales and was basically a six hour long lecture with only two 15 minute breaks. Again, I left and since I was so needy for money, thought nothing of it because it's just a part-time job. 
What really opened my eyes was what our assignment was for the second day of training. On the second day of training, I was informed that I needed to use my phone and contact people from my personal contacts in my own cell phone to sell Cutco knives to. It was at this moment that my head manager tells us that we aren't selling Cutco knives by telemarketing, but by door-to-door -door sales. We were also to go online and look up contacts of old teachers and professors and people we were once associated with. I was again gullible and just did it because I was this desperate and I pretended to call some of the people to get them off my back. I went home and the job at Vector didn't feel right and it was just shady. So I typed in Vector Marketing into Google and needless to say, one of the first links that popped up was Vector Marketing Scam. I dug up more information and called my branch to inform them I would be quitting regardless of my monetary issues because I needed to protect my former acquaintances and my family. I couldn't get in contact with any of the managers nor did anyone answer the phone at the office. I didn't go to the third day and I got multiple calls from the manager asking where I was and I informed them that I was quitting. Needless to say, I only went into two days of training and was told that training wasn't paid for by the managers. I now have no job, but I am looking as I am now 20 years old and am fairly certain I can get one. But no matter what you need to do, be aware of this company. I cannot stress this enough. Source, classaction.org. So let's check out what is said over at classaction.org. Employees of Vector Marketing who went through the initial training to learn how to sell its cut coast knives may be entitled to compensation for back wages and other damages in light of allegations that the company violated its legal obligation to pay wages for the initial training time. According to a prior class action suit filed in California, which has since been resolved, Vector Marketing was alleged to have violated the Fair Labor Standards Act and state laws when it failed to pay employees for the time they spent during their initial training sessions, usually over the course of three to five days. While this class action lawsuit has been resolved, classaction.org would like to hear from Vector Marketing employees in other states to determine if they have been denied compensation for this initial training time. Did you go through the Vector Marketing initial training session? If so, you may be able to file a claim against Vector Marketing and recover compensation for training time wages. To find out if you are owed compensation, fill out our free no obligation case review form today. Complaints lodged by former Vector employees. Former employees of Vector Marketing have taken to the internet to share their experience selling cut code knives, describing the job as a scam and too good to be true. According to the complaints, chosen applicants were asked to attend three to five days initial training sessions for which they were not paid. According to federal law, employers who require their workers to attend training must usually provide payment for this time. According to the prior California class action suit, it was alleged that Vector Marketing was required to pay its employees at least the minimum wage for three to five days they spent in their initial training but failed to do so. So next I've decided to check out truthinadvertising.org and lo and behold, here we have Cutco. So let's check out some of the things that were you know, found here. Truth in Advertising investigated every company on the November 29th, 2017 Direct Selling Association DSA membership. I have done this also, I looked here when I did my reviews on Enagic. So let's go ahead and check out what a couple of these are. All stories about your experience with MLM, my experience with MLM. I think are extremely important. And just because one person doesn't have a crappy experience, that doesn't mean that we take out the eraser and just say, everything's okay. I think it's a lot more complex than that. And I think it's important to dig into more stories and find out more about how these companies operate. And beyond that, it also is very much related to the indoctrination that you undergo when you become a true Hunbot and you're recruiting people and you're all into it because I suspect with vector marketing that there are people building a team. 
They just happen to be reaching out to college students to go out and, you know, do demonstrations. And maybe the college students themselves are not joining, but there's someone somewhere that is putting together a team. It's not that vector marketing is just like paying you by the hour. That's not happening. It is, you know, a commission-based type opportunity. If you would like me to do a deep dive into vector marketing, then let me know below in the comments and I will dig into it a bit more. If you enjoy anti-MLM content, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, that sort of thing to let me know what you think about it. There was a link in my video description that will help you file with the FTC. I also created a video on how to do that because I think it's important that we, as people who have been Hunbots, go ahead and tell our stories in addition to letting government agencies know what our experience has been so that more of these companies can be investigated. And remember, change starts now.